Okay, we're back in the studio again now, and um, Kathleen has stayed behind <laughs> with uh, whatever she wants to say, and I think we should just continue on. Well, yeah. I think we have another subject, don't we? We do, but it's actually related. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, an event that we're doing on November 4th. It's for Greenspring Memory Support, your passport to healthy aging. So we're going to have um, a program from 12 to 3 on November 4th. It's going to be in Hunter's Crossing Conference Room. Um, and it's really going to be about brain health and memory support. Um, so we're going to be having all of the different memory support activities and services that are available on campus to support our residents. Um, we're going to be having all of those services available and uh, providing activities and information to anybody that drops by. We're also having um, a lunch and learn, which is going to be a panel discussion on navigating healthy aging. That's going to include Dr. Bala, um, myself, uh, Nancy J, who's uh, our administrator of ancillary health, and um, De Devonna McFarland, who's the manager for our memory care unit. So that's going to be an opportunity for uh, residents to come, listen to our presentation, but also ask questions about how memory support services work on campus. And again, that's going to be a free lunch. Um, and the panel discussion, um, we'll have information out on how you can, re anybody that's interested can register for that part of the program. And then um, until 3 o'clock, there's going to be tables available and uh, activities being, uh, being provided to the residents so that they can just walk around and find out more about, about the services that are available. So it should be good. Yeah, it should be. Um, I had fun at the last time you had something like it. Yeah, we've done a lot of really good things. Um, we've, I don't know if you've been to the Brain Train, which is a, a, how we sort of mix up the, co the uh, memory part and the phys physical activity part, because that's supposed to be another way to kind of engage your brain in something different. Um, we've, we've got Mind Benders, which is a monthly group that people go to. Of course, we have our memory fitness classes, so we have a lot of um, a lot of things that we're doing right now to get our residents to help our residents. I think with their goals, which is to to really have to be healthy as they age, and to especially focusing on brain and memory health. Yeah, it's a, it's really a concern. I mean, it's I know it is. You, you know, that's all you see is you know. It seems dementia. Well, it, we called it dementia, right. which I think is a better word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. But I mean, it is. It's a, it's a real focus. And since now we know people's lives are, are longer than they, they have ever been, yeah. um, that you, want, you certainly want to make sure that you're healthy and, um, and happy for as many years as you have. Yeah. So these are, I mean, everywhere you look now, uh, every newspaper you look at, every magazine you pick up, there's something about brain health. Um, so I think that, I hope that the residents feel that they're lucky to be in a community like Greenspring where there are a lot of intentional programs available to them to be able to help them with that goal. Uh, yeah, because I think it's, uh, when my husband was alive, we used to, you know, every Sunday go to the nursing home to bring communion to, you know, mm -hmm. Hans Krishna. And I thank God that I would never have to go to one of those, the, the, the nursing home. Oh, you mean the old time nursing yeah. homes that, yeah. yeah, absolutely. You just see they line them up and they, you know, uh, right. line them up and, right. and, and, and they just sit there like, you know. Yeah. That doesn't feel right at all, and thankfully we are. Those days are past us. So certainly at Greenspring, those days yeah. are past us. Where, our, for example, our memory care unit is is vibrant, active. People are, you know, have lots of opportunities to engage with each other and to do things that are um, important and relevant to them about music and art. 
um, and just socializing with each other. So, um, so yeah, I mean, w that's what we've been talking about is just how our approach to supporting people that have some kind of memory impairment has really changed. And also for, the pe for people who want to maintain their memory health, there are also different kinds of approaches and programs that are available here on campus. So the memory support um, expo that we're having on November, November 4th is an opportunity for people to, to come and really see the full gamut of what we, ha what we offer on campus. Um, and I hope it should be not only exciting, but also reassuring to people that there are all these services and all of these supports available to them. Well, it's, it's nice to know that there are changes, and it's probably more changes coming up. I mean, it just... All the time. I just spent, uh, myself and several of our team just spent three days up at corporate, um, and it was a memory support forum that we had with members of um, all the communities that are in Greenspring. So that's like a total of 16 communities representative and re represented and we just did a lot of brainstorming around memory health and memory support, shared best practices, really just sort of got energized to come back to the communities and uh, continue to grow our programs. Well, I'm glad you're looking forward. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, Erickson as an enterprise is really committed to memory support and then um, each of the communities is really embracing that and you know doing what we we do individually I will brag on um, our community a lot and saying that we are the most um, advanced in terms of using creative art therapies as a way to uh, to provide support for memory and brain health. Um, we have the most creative art therapists of all the communities, so we're um, we're really excited about that. But yeah, yeah. Well, we have the best. They yeah, keep, we have the keep. best of everything <laughs> <laughs> here at Green Spring. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, I mean, just uh, I I see the signs up for the um, the quilting group or the I think there's a they have a chat and stitch or something like yeah, that yeah. and you know there's a lot of research now that's showing that uh, quilting stitching crocheting knitting yeah I are, should get back to knitting are also really really good for your brain health because again it's the way that um, your brain is engaged in a different kind of way than what it normally is so you know that group is also providing a memory support service, believe it or not. So, yeah, I've had people well do quilts mm -hmm. with uh, patches of history of their family. Yeah, you know, and they, one made history of uh, the generations. They t did pictures and wow. the generations. So you sleep with your dead relatives. On yeah, the, every well, night, but well, kind of weird, but <laughs> <laughs> but definitely. I mean, I think that you know all of that, um, all of that. Cre not only are you engaging your hands, but you're also you know creating your history, which is really that whole idea. Of, we have our memoir group on campus. They do a lot of work with you know kind of writing about their personal histories. I think that's another way to for people to engage. Probably if I went through every group that's available on campus, I would be able to tell you a reason why that that's good for you in so many ways, and one of them would probably be brain health as well. Yeah, I, I that was the first thing I went to was uh, memory when I came in. And I was doing pretty good, and I, and I I'm not into it for a book. I mean, that takes too much energy. Mm -hmm. and so I do essays on, on the uh, generations. I, I came, there was f three generations behind me when I was born. Wow. And I grew up with, you know, a lot of them. So you've been doing essays on their stories? On their stories yeah. and, um, you know, and how it was related to me. And, um, and a, a lot of, and my mother. <laughs> Lots if of stories she could about get out, her, if huh? she could get out of that grave and come after me with a baseball bat, I think she'd been spilling because the Because being sneakers. Irish, you just didn't. You didn't say, yeah. You didn't tell those stories. Yeah. yeah. Well, we just had did a focus group um, 
for with a total two different focus groups but with a total of uh, 30 of our residents and that was one of the things that people were talking about is as as we get older the idea of um, sort of having that legacy to pass on mm -hmm. and that sounds like what you're doing is to be able to create that and yeah. I I'm guessing you're sharing it with your family and your children they better I'll be at the, with them after a baseball bat yeah <laughs> but that's so nice to be able to yeah. give that yeah. to them no, it, it's uh, and I find out my uh, past history way past you know mm -hmm. that's sharper than than any of them I, I can just picture my whole, all of the, you know, all of my relatives and how they reacted to me. And yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but to be able to put that into words that your kids, because sometimes, and I sort of have been there myself, that um, when your parents are alive, you forget to ask them questions. I know. And then it's, you know, kind of too late. And then it's too late. late, yeah. Well, I think we've They're telling us to wrap up, huh? Wrap it up. <gasps> oh, well. <laughs> Next time, Mary. Yeah. We'll think, well, you'll think of something. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to, as they, as they say, uh, wrap it up with uh, the announcements.